So today, Austin will be uh, running a case called Media Merger. Um, the prompt is, our client is a major U.S. media company based in New York City. It has agreed to merge with another top media player based in Los Angeles. They have made the decision to combine operations into one building and will choose one of their existing buildings to be the new headquarters. They are not sure which one is more suitable. Question for you is, which location should they choose? Okay, um, just, as a re- just as a quick recap. So um, two companies are about to merge, one in New York and one in um, LA, and um, they're trying to combine and then, you know, um, find um, operational synergies. So they're trying to look for um, the best um, the, the best location for a new um, headquarters. I might, you know, does that cover the, yeah, okay. Um, I would like to clarify a few questions. Okay. So I don't know, um, how many locations do they have? And um, but, um, yeah, how many locations do they have? Yeah, that's a good question. So they just have the New York location and the LA location. Um, and so the choice is just between one of those two. Okay, um, is there any peculiar, um, any peculiar information um, as regards to the New York location and the early location to help me decide um, which to advise them to choose on? So, what's, so what are the peculiarities you know, about the New York location and the early um, locations? Yeah, certainly. Um, what would you like to know about these locations? So since it's a media firm, um, 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 they don't know anything about their landmass, um, you know, about the, um, the tech capability of the locations, you know, any of such data. Yeah. So for the New York location, um, they occupy 200,000 square feet. And then the LA location, the, that building occupies 400,000 square feet, but the client requires 100,000 square feet of space. You can also assume that any space that they do not use can be subleased out so they can rent out um, any square footage they're not using. They have annual leases at both these buildings with a 10 year commitment. Um, And so regardless of which location is chosen, they need to pay rent for both locations. Finally, the chargeable price uh, for subleasing is $40 per square footage in New York City and $30 per square footage for LA. Thank you. Uh, I would like to take a minute to clarify my structure, if that's okay. Got it. In a time of record high inflation and low returns for the S&P 500, you need to diversify your portfolio with an alternative asset class that performs well during times of high inflation. The solution? Masterworks, the platform for investing in contemporary blue chip art by renowned artists including Picasso, Banksy, and Warhol. Did you know that two thirds of the world's billionaires allocate 10 to 30% of their portfolios to art? And now, for the first time, ordinary investors like you and I can do the same by purchasing fractional shares in world renowned art. Over the last 26 years, Contemporary art prices have outperformed the total return of the S&P 500 by 164%. Are you ready to diversify your portfolio? Click the link in the video description below to skip the waitlist and start investing today. Okay, so um, I, I would like to look at um, this in terms of, um, I'd like to look at this in, in, in like considering three areas. I'd like to look at the current company, you know, uh, what's the size of the current company? Um, how are they growing? Since they decided to merge with the, the um, like the new company, I'd, I'd, I'd like to understand more about the um, about the current company. Then I'd like to look at um, as well about the company that has been acquired. Um, okay, about I'd, I'd like to know the the revenue, um, the profits, and then their market share. And then I'd like to look at the acquisition sh- um, strategy. Right, so they're trying to acquire this. So um, I believe that. Um, since since they're trying to acquire this, so I see them trying to um, you know um, make get some operational synergies. So this is in terms of cost cost saving in terms of rent. But then there are other factors I'd like to consider, like 
Are there other um, synergies that could be gained from these transactions? Say um, um, revenue wise, like are there other complementary products that are uh, in New York City or LA? Um, is there any intellectual pro property that will be gained from being in any particular location or any peculiar advantages? I would like also like to consider um, since you have to um, two, like two different locations, which um, syncs more with the market? You know, is it LA or is it New York? And then which one has an established channel? Is it LA or is it New York? So I, I believe looking at these three um, um, ports, I'll be able to properly advise which location they should you know choose. Excellent. Thanks for that overview. Um, let's start with thinking about which um, building they should relocate to. Uh, so what information would you need to know to calculate the financial impact of locating to either New York or L.A.? So um, I would like to know about the rent, the cost of the rent. So. Um, I know I understand that LA has 400,000 square feet, New York has 200,000 square feet, but then the, the company only needs 100,000. So if it's the um, um, LA office, they have the 100,000 square feet they require, and then they can lease out the rest for 300,000, right? At, the, at this particular, you know, um, rate, $30 per, per square feet. Same thing applies for New York. So how about the rent itself for LA and for New York? Yeah, we have that information. So for New York, uh, the client will have to pay $40 per square feet per year for the whole building. And then for LA, they will also need to pay $40 per square feet per year for the whole building. Okay, how about um, cost of um, service, um, cost of service charge, how about um, other costs that are, I mean, that, that are associated you know, like with having the building in New York or LA? Yeah, so there's some miscellaneous costs having to do with um, like adding the sign on top of the, the door and we will sort of bucket all these costs into build out costs um, and we'll spread them out over 10 years. Uh, so for New York, those build out costs are 1.5 million over 10 years. And then for L.A., they will need to spend half a million in build out costs over 10 years. Okay, so um, aside rent, are there any other, is there any other advantage that New York has over LA? Because this seems like since they would have um, the same um, rent, $40 per square feet, but then LA has um, like, um, after they like um, they, they take the 100 square feet required, you know, for the operations, then they can lease out um, um, the rest for, okay, okay. So this is just, okay, I'm, I'm just saying, okay, so they have a lower service charge in LA, right? Mm -hmm. But then they have 300,000 square feet available that they could lease out at $30 per hour, right? Same applies for New York. So aside all of this information, is there any other information that um, would affect um, choosing LA over New York? Before I go ahead to calculate, you know, um, the gains per se, but then is, is there under consideration that I, need to, that, I need, that I need to think about? Yeah, we have a little bit more information. What other uh, financial considerations do you think could be relevant? Hmm. Okay. Um... You have the rent, you have the service charge. Um, do you have any numbers on the um, on the number of interest in the office spaces in New York and 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 early to ensure um, to be sure that if we um, you know pick any of the um, locations, they will be sure to be customers to, to take up any of the like the available free space. Yeah, the average vac vacancy rate, um, so the percentage of office spaces that don't get rented, people aren't interested in, in paying for that, um, is 10% in New York. And then the average vacancy rate in LA is 18%. Okay. So that's 
Okay. So um, I would, I would like to go ahead to calculate. Um, I'd like to go ahead to calculate for um early. So since they have um four hundred thousand square feet, and only uh, and the company the new merged company would require only hundred thousand square feet space. So they have, so there's about three hundred thousand left. Of that three hundred thousand, so they're renting the 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 okay yeah. So the cost would be. So the cost would be um so we have forty okay so forty so that would be four hundred thousand square feet times forty dollars per square feet. Okay. Same thing for New York. Um, that'll be sixteen million. Um, New York has two hundred thousand square feet times forty dollars, so that'll be eight million. So it will cost um the cost of rent in LA will be sixteen. The cost of rent in New York will be eight million. Now, how much would they gain? So having okay. No, 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 no. So um, to cost them hundred thousand. Yeah, to cost them. Hundred thousand dollars. So since they have, um, since LA has four hundred thousand, since LA has four hundred thousand square feet, if they decide, okay, let me just put this in this way. I'm starting with LA. If they take hundred thousand square feet of the four hundred, paying forty dollars. Per square feet, then that would be four million in cost for rent. For New York, hundred thousand and paying forty dollars, the cost would be four million dollars as well. Now, how much would LA gain from the um, free space? We have occupancy rate of ten uh, ten percent. I'm trying to see if I can factor this in. So basically, we have three hundred thousand left in um, LA. And if they rent this out at uh, forty at forty dollars per hour, times eighteen percent, zero point one eight. Okay. So that will be three hundred thousand square feet left, and forty dollars square feet times um, eighteen percent. So that will be. Two, two point one six million. Why for New York? They would have hundred square feet left, multiplied by no. So so at least uh, thirty dollars. Sorry, at least thirty dollars per square feet. So that would be three hundred thousand left times thirty dollars times occupancy rate of 18%, 0 0.18. So that will be 1.62 million. So to clarify, the vacancy rate is 18%. Yes. So the it, occupancy yes. rate would be one minus, okay. Okay, yeah, so zero, zero minus one. Oh, okay. And for the rents they're paying in LA, do you think that they would have to pay for just exactly the amount of space that they're using? Or would, would you expect that they have to pay for the entire building or the entire floor? So um, the way I'm thinking about this is they have 400,000 um, square feet. So they are paying for 100, right? At $40, that's, that's $4 million. And then they are leasing out 300,000. So there will be, okay, yeah, their service charge. So the service charge is 
So the, the, the eventual cost would be the 4 million plus the service charge of 500,000. So total cost that's coming to LA, you know, to operate the office there is $4.5 million. So they actually have to pay for all of the rent for the 400,000 square feet because they have ownership of it. So even though they're only occupied 100,000 square feet, they have okay. to pay rent for all 400,000. Okay, so 400,000. Yeah, but if they if they pay the rent for the 400,000, they will recover that rent when they lease it out, right? So which is the reason why I'm... Oh, okay. So the yes. cost would be four. On, okay, yeah, I get what you're so saying. Because they're leasing the entire floor, but then they're subleasing the amount of space they don't need to occupy. Yeah, it's almost gotcha. like you're subletting an apartment that you're going away from in the summer. Okay, so what I would do is four hundred thousand, right? Times four times forty dollars per square feet, right? That would be six. Okay. That'll be sixteen million plus the service charge of five hundred thousand. So that'll be sixteen point five million that will cost the LA office. Now the New York office as well will pay two hundred thousand. Yeah, two hundred thousand times forty dollars. That would be 8 million plus service charge of 1.5. So that would be 9.5 million in cost for the New York office. Now, in terms of revenue, how much they will gain, gain from leasing out the other space? So LA office will, leave, will gain um, 300,000, right? Times $30 per square feet times um, occupancy rate of 82%. So that would be 7.3 for LA office. That would be 7.38 million. Now, the New York office. But then, if the, um, if the service charges 500, okay, 500,000 for 10 years. So that means service charge will be 50. Mm-hmm. To be, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so that'll be five hundred thousand divided by ten. So that'll be fifty k. Sorry. So um, the LA office is supposed to pay fifty k per year. So that'll be sixteen million and um fifty thousand. The New York office will be one point five for you know ten years. So that'll be one point five for ten years divided by ten. So that'll be 150,000. But then, um, this service charge of uh, 1.5 million uh, you know, per year, when they rent out, so, so um, when they lease out to um, the, um, occup- the, like the other occupants, the other occupants are also supposed to contribute to the service charge, right? We're assuming that um, the client will cover all the service charge okay. for the building that they're occupying. So if they're in L.A., they need to pay the service charge for L.A. Um, but if New York, then they only pay the service charge for New York. OK, so since New York has $100,000 free um, and it's $40 per square feet and the occupancy rate is so we have okay, zero point. 0.0.9 so that will be 3.6 million so from um so in terms of deciding where to go to the early of um the early office will spend um 16 million in in, in for, like for the office space but then they'll be able to get from the new occupants Using this, um, um, assuming this um, occupancy rate, like the, yeah, this occupancy rate of um, 18 percent, able to get seven point three eight million, you know, back. Now the New York office is spend eight million, but they're able to get three point six million back. So that would be um, sixteen million, uh, seven point three, be around eight point seven million already, and the New York office is already. 
So just by looking at these numbers already, um, the New York office seems to be the better option because the cost would be eight million, right, mm -hmm. per year, but then they will get three point six million, in, like when they lease out the other space. So the total cost to the company will be four point four million, but for the LA office. When they, you know, if they pay for the full building, right, at, uh, yeah, because since it's a bigger space and they only need um, just one quarter of the whole space, but then they have to pay for the whole, um, build, um, the whole, the whole building at $40 per square foot. So it will cost them $16 million, right, um, and aside the um, service charge of, 50, uh, of $50K, but then they would need to, um, they only get in revenue of $7.38 million leaving them with a cost of $8.7 So it pays to go to the New York office because of lower cost. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for that overview. Um, and with that said, this would be if um, you're only occupying LA or New York, but because they are having, um, they're in the middle of a 10-year committed lease, they actually mm -hmm. have to pay the client actually has to pay rent at both of the buildings, whether than they're occupying New York or LA. So how would you modify your calculation to take into account that even if HQ is in LA, they also have to pay rent on the New York building? So if the lower cost, okay. Um, so they're paying rent for both buildings, regardless yeah. of where the HQ is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if they're paying rent for both buildings, but then the cost is higher at the LA office. And, um, okay. So I think it would make sense to, um, but then if they said the, if, 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 if they decide to, um, stay at the LA office, they'll be incurring eight, over 8.7 million in terms of costs. Then the revenue from the New York office, the New York office is already small, but it's all, it's, it has very, it has a very high occupancy rates. Okay, I'll think about this in, in this. In, um, they could decide to stay in the LA office. So, how much are they, so if they decide to stay in the, in, in the LA office and lease out the of the New York office, how much would they gain in revenue? So if they have 200,000 square feet, and decide to lease the whole building. That would be 200,000. Yeah, times 40, okay. Hmm. If they decide to stay in LA and lease out the New York office, how much would they gain? But then they'll be paying, it's the same thing, they'll be paying. Also, they'll lease the whole 200,000 square feet, okay. So I think so. I'll do the the the, the, the calculation again to be able to get the uh, the numbers. They have two hundred thousand square feet, and then um they will gain forty dollars per okay yeah forty dollars per square feet uh, you know, and then the occupancy rate of zero point nine percent so again seven point two million. Okay, so what I would say is, um, if they decide to stay in the New York office, then they can lease out the two hundred thousand square feet, right? But then, if the cost is fourteen dollars per hour, and then they are leasing out, they're leasing, uh, they're leasing it out, uh, yeah, leasing it out at the same forty dollars per square feet, right? Then um, the only cost to them would be the service charge of five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Now, for the early office. If they decide to lease out the old 400,000, now um, they are paying $40 per square feet, but then leasing it at $30 per square feet at a lower occupancy rate, then it makes sense for them to stay at LA and then maximize the revenue they can earn from the New York office. Got it. And how much in LA would they get from subleasing? From subleasing, uh, 
Yeah, so yeah, I think it's the same thing with the, with the other calculation I made. So um, they would take hundred thousand dollars, right? It would cost them um, to pick for the old building to cost them sixteen million. But then when they lease out the two hundred thousand, they would get um, seven point three million in return. So um, sixteen million that will cost them minus zero point three they'll get from the residents. So the the difference is eight point seven million in costs for the early office, if they decide to, you know, stick to the 100,000 and then lease out the 300,000. Mm -hmm. Got it, perfect. So before you said uh, New York City, um, with the revised calculation, we see that LA could be a better option. So what are some non-financial considerations um, in regard to choosing an HQ locations? Um, I'll consider the staff uh, um, the like number of staff in the current staffing model, um, you know, um, the staff preferences. So basically, the staff basically one, two. Um, aside um, the financial, right? The non-financial would be um, the um, the shared infrastructure since there'll be a measure, right? So um, where there's a greater portion of the shared infrastructure, then where the say the um the the the, the drivers of revenue um is it uh, drivers of revenue is it R and D is it sales and marketing where are they more located is it, is it more in, more in the east coast or is it more in the west coast you know all these other factors yeah that would and then the, then um the products are being sold right and then the complementary product since there'll be a major right so where the um uh, the main product drivers uh, the main sales drivers are is is it on one you know, on one side of the of the course or the other, so that would determine the other factors. You know, that would inform the, 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 like um, the choice of the HQ. Awesome, perfect. And now that we've gone gone through that, the CEO of the media merger company would um, like to hear your final recommendation. Okay, um, give me a minute to get that, back, please. Mm. Okay, so my recommendation would be to um, to stay in LA office and then rent out the New York office with a view to maximize revenue from you know from from the New York office uh, from the New York office because either ways we would need to take our own office and then pay the rent for the other. So so it makes sense to maximize the New York office since they have you know high occupancy rates and the numbers are better. And then the risks with this would be that. Um, for the measures, there, 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 um, there are other non-financial uh, factors that are very important as well, like this, the, um, the staff choice, the staffing model, the infrastructure, right? So this will inform my um, the, uh, my advice for the next steps that the company should take. They should um, do a proper analysis of the non-financial factors. While the financial re uh, um, choice seems a bit obvious, you know, to go to LA, but there are other non-financial factors that are very, very important, like, you know, uh, what is driving the business, um, um, the um, the customers where they are. So, and and then the staff like um, the, the 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 choice you know like um, for this for the staff. So looking at those other non financial factors could 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 even be more important than the financial decision because it seems like a no brainer to stay with LA and maximize the New York choice. And the, the, yeah, uh, yeah. So it makes sense to look at these other non financial factors that might that, that might come to play to ensure that overall they they don't lose market share and they don't lose market size. Got it. Thank you for, for that information. And on your risk uh, side, um, in terms of staffing and uh, figuring out employee preferences, how would you start to collect that information? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll look at um, the number of staff at both offices. Um, the ones is, so yeah, so if it's if it's so since it's a media company, right? Um, mm -hmm. but then I don't know kind of company. So it depends on where the uh, the core of the operations are. So are there more um staff? So it, uh, it, like in terms of numbers or the key um key players in terms of staffing, right? Are they more on the west coast or the east coast? Then what are the preferences? How would they like how would they affect the operation? So it's a media company. Are they shooting on sites? Um, would it be easy to travel around? So what I would do is I would look at the um, the, the core business after the measure. Then looking at um, this, where the staff are in both offices, we could do a poll to see if the ones that are um, that will be affected, if they're willing to re relocate, and how that will impact the core of the business. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you um, for the recommendation. I'll I'll let them know. That's it for the for the case. How did you feel about it, Austin? 
Um, so I think I was expecting, so this is a measure, right? I was expecting um, more discussions with regards to, oh, um, this is the company that is being, target, okay, like this is a target company, this company that has been acquired, or oh, this is the acquisition strategies, and then this would be the risk of benefit with regards to the merger. But then I was shocked that it was just um, two companies starting, just, just about to merge, and it was about the simple choice of which office to go. And then in terms of which office to go, um, why would you go for one over the other? So you don't have to calculate the occupancy rate and all of that. I was really thrown off a bit, I, I, I think. I was expecting something different, but then it was just, oh, basically these are just two companies trying to merge. Which should you pick and why? And then, then the math, right? Does the math make sense, basically? I just felt that, that like that was it. I was really trying. I was thinking, you know, it to be so. This is more of like a corporate um, buyer M and A case, but not in regards to synergies. Um, the target being acquired, the target being acquired, whatever strategy, whatever um, synergy you get from revenue or cost, it's just a basic, simple case of two various entities, and they want to buy, and they have two different offices, and then which office you should, you know, should pick. So I was really trying off. Yeah, a little surprised. Yeah, this is this one is related to M and A, except it's not in the upfront due diligence process where we're trying to figure out synergies. It's more in the post acquisition strategy of like, um, like logistically, which office, like staffing implications, and all that. Um, so I could definitely tell that um, you're a little bit surprised, but I think that um, you maintained your composure well. You sort of rolled with the punches when it came to the math, and so overall, um, I, th- I think that this, this was a, this was a good one. And I just have some um, pushes that I'll sort of go like from top to bottom. So from the very start, we um, I read the prompt. And the recap was good, but then your clarifying questions were um, pretty general. I really wanted to push you in terms of specificity, um, in terms of asking instead of what implications uh, should there be between each of the locations, something a little bit um, more direct, such as like how much space it is, or even some of the questions that you had um, were really good after the conclusion of like, what is the core business? I mean, I said it was a media company, um, but there's so many different things within media. Is it like a digital ad agency or is it actually like they're uh, creating media assets for others? Um, so that could have um, that context going into it, even though the question itself is about um, like which location, those sort of other implications and understanding um, before you get into the structure, uh, what the business is and how do they make money uh, explicitly um, can can help sort of like allow you to um, have more context and focus there. Um, and then because of that, I had to give you some of the math assumptions assumptions early, I was planning to, to do that later. So more specificity in your clarifying questions would be good. I mean, went into the structure, that one was a minute, 57 seconds. So right in the one to two minute window uh, that we tend to be shooting for. So that was good. Um, for that, I would push you to anchor your structure on um, the question at hand. So I know that like, with M and A, typically it's it's uh, the due diligence process, or early on what we do in um, in the private equity group at Bain. Um, but this is specifically um, trying to tackle a more general question, or like a more uh, pointed question, I should say. Um, and so your buckets should sort of fall into those. So having some flexibility around um, the structures that you have in your mind and adapting that to the question at hand um, can help to. Um, allow the interviewer to see like where your head is going and sort of step you through that. Um, so definitely there is a certain cadence that m and cases tend to follow. Um, but if the case is actually something else or it's wanting you to focus on a specific thing, don't be afraid to customize your um, structure as needed. And then the actual points that you had, um, they're all very good for like an m and due diligence, but um, and you also had like the two locations uh, bent towards it as well, but more focus on on the question at hand is good. Though some of the things that you said, like market share, revenue, profits, how are we growing? They're great if it was a, a pre diligence case. So I know I uh, made a lot of groundwork there. Before I move on to the math portion, do you have any follow up questions? 
Uh, yes, um, I, I think it makes sense. Um, most times when you just hear um, what was the productivity case, your, your head just keep going, just just um, just start thinking about revenue, costs, um, fixed costs, and all of that. Then when you hear M and A cases, you just start. So yeah, it makes sense. You know, I think it's like a very good reminder to always listen to the prompts and then follow the um, the lead of the like wherever they lean to. Just follow and then be very adaptable. I think it's a very good reminder. Mm-hmm. Awesome, thank you. So now um, we jump into the math. I gave you the um, all the inputs, and I know that this was something that was a big um, thing to focus on. I thought that you did the math um, really well. I think that um, what kind of gave us hiccups there is sort of upfront assumptions. So after you get a math uh, question, taking a moment to, uh, yes, repeat it, but then also uh, proactively state some assumptions that you want to make. So that way I can kind of course correct. I was trying to look for uh, an opportunity for that would be appropriate for me to jump in and say, hey, no, we're actually paying rent at both locations. Um, or like sort of adjusting your assumptions can get you to the answer. Because I could tell in terms of the arithmetic um, and getting like the numbers to add up in the line items, you could do that. Um, but it was a little bit hard to um, allow me to jump in and adjust your assumptions to match the case. Um, and I think what made that difficult in this one is that there's a few different things happening here. So we're occupying both spaces. So rent is happening at both spaces. Um, because we're locked in that 10 year uh, lease commitment. So that's the main reason why we have to do both. Um, but then there's also an opportunity to um, lease out uh, both of those locations. So in the end, you got to the right answer, the numbers uh, checked out. Um, but after I sort of course corrected the first time about uh, renting at both um, locations, I was hoping that you would push to realize that um, if they're on the lease for both locations, that means that they can also sublet or sublease at both locations. Um, I, the difference wasn't answer changing, but it's just another sort of um, a sort of thing to take into account. And so in terms of uh, advice for this uh, financial portion, I would say, especially in a case that's as quantitative as this, um, invest that time up front to uh, say out loud what your assumptions are, what you're kind of confused about, um, or even like taking a step back to a uh, voiceover, how you're going to approach um, each line item um, would be helpful. And even just saying like, OK, does this make sense? Or anytime you get to the end of a calculation doing that 400K times the $40. OK, this is like the 16 million um, for L.A., like does this number seem correct to you? I'm sort of giving your interviewer opportunities to interject and course correct Um it would be good. Eventually I got in there, but it was just a little bit, um, I felt like I had to interrupt you just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And another thing um, that stands out in the math portion is that we got to all the way on the end in terms of what the overall annual cash flow will be for LA. And then we repeated that same process um, for New York. And whether you go to LA or New York, it's net negative. Um, so that's something that, um, you could comment on sort of along the way, um, anything that sort of stands out to you, whether it be the, um, the fact that LA's vacancy rate is double the New York vacancy rate. I'm sort of having that, um, that, uh, thinking in the back of your mind in regards to, does this information make sense to me? Um, whether or not like the magnitude, the negative magnitude made sense to you. So anything, um, any kind of reaction that you can have to the math um, also shows your logic at, uh, of the like business sense aside from the quantitative sense, um, if, that, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I, I think the case was also very realistic. It makes sense that New York only have 10, um, 10% <laughs> because New York, like, people are always looking for space in New York. And yeah, so I think numbers check that. So it didn't click as such, but yeah, it's a good reminder. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be specifically about the vacancy rate or just any. And this one didn't really have an outlier number or anything like that. But if there happened to be, then you could um, comment out how like the numbers align with your expectations. Okay. And then when we got to that, um, we got to the financial impact. You commented on that. Uh, and then I asked you about the non-financial considerations, um, which I think were good. It was mainly the staffing, uh, the infrastructure and thinking about in which location, and I think you were going with um, in which location, um, 
would be best from a business point of view, like where are the clients actually staying at, where are the customers, um, and which location would be best for, for driving revenue. And so asking some of those um, clarifying questions about how they make money um, could help in the sort of creative portion. Because we said it was a media company, but if it were like a digital ads company where all their work is matter. virtual, yeah, then then it could potentially not matter. Um, so that, that sort of thing can help you as well. Oh. And when we get to the recommendation, I liked your recommendation. You were answer first, so that's something um, that Bain uh, really likes, just coming out with the answer, backing it up with... Um, with the analysis that you did. So it's great to include um, any of the numbers. So I know that we have the numbers for um, LA versus New York. So calling that out in your conclusion and a couple bullet points is great. Um, and then your risks are great. Um, and anything to add that I would say would have to be just any next steps that you would recommend to sort of try and mitigate the risks that you identified. And, and that's it. Uh, great job. Thanks for um, basically putting yourself out there. And uh, I had a good time. Thank you so much. Um, I think this is a very good reminder, you know, going ahead into the major interview um, season. You just have these ideas. You have everything in your head. But then there'll be a slight um, shift and you have to react to it positively. So, yeah, I think it's a good reminder. Thank you. Thank you.